In this video, we're going to look at Walsh diagrams and try to answer the question of why BEH2 is linear and water is bent. So as I said, we have the BEH2 molecule. The hydrogens are 180 degrees apart from each other, linear molecule in a straight line. Water, as we saw in the previous video, is at 104.5 degrees. That's what's called a bent shape in Vesper theory. So the, the answer to why are these different is the fact that water has lone pairs and beryllium hydride does not. So in order to answer why lone pairs make all the difference, we need to analyze the molecular orbitals and see how their energies change as a function of the shape of the molecule. Okay, so uh, beryllium has a four protons in the nucleus, giving us four electrons, one proton and one electron from each hydrogen, giving us six total electrons. Two of those are core in the 1s orbital of beryllium, four of those are in the valence shell, and they are bonding uh, electrons, forming the sigma bonds between beryllium and hydrogen. For water, it's a similar situation for the first six electrons, but water being uh, oxygen having a eight plus and eight electrons instead of the four of beryllium gives us two more uh, sets of electrons. So these four electrons are also in the valence shell, but they are non-bonding and they form lone pairs. So how does this uh, make all the difference here? Well, if we look at a molecular orbital diagram of beryllium hydride and water, we can draw something like this. You have the two sigma g, a bonding orbital where everything is in the same phase, contributes to bonding everywhere. Two sigma u, a similar kind of deal, contributes to bonding between the beryllium and the hydrogen, but at a higher energy. And then there would be uh, non-bonding pairs in the p orbitals, in the px and py, up there, pretty much neutral, no overlap with the hydrogen atomic orbitals. And then you have anti-binding orbitals of the three sigma g, three sigma u, where you have nodes between these things and depletion of density between uh, the central atom and the hydrogens. Now, if we bend the molecule, we get these orbitals that we see here. These labels are labeled uh, based off of their irreducible representations. That's something that comes from uh, symmetry and group theory, which is discussed in a later chapter. So these irreps here, as we describe these orbitals from, uh, go up in energy just as these do, but the same orbitals as we bend them, same kind of thing. We have bonding, bonding. Uh, one of these non-bonding orbitals is still non-bonding, and two anti-bonding orbitals. But the most interesting thing is one of these 1 pi u orbitals, as you bend it, becomes the 3a1 orbital. And as you bend, this, if we call it px here, starts to overlap with these hydrogen 1s orbitals because what before was an equal parts overlap and non-overlap now starts to differentially become heavier and heavier, more and more overlap as we bend these two hydrogens down and bring them more on the uh, plus, S, plus x axis, if we call this uh, the x axis. So this 3a1 orbital, which used to be the 1 pi u non-bonding, now the 3a1 uh, bonding orbital, is making all the difference whenever you have uh, this orbital occupied. In beryllium, this orbital is not occupied. There's no electrons in the valence shell to fill it up because if we see uh, the four electrons in the valence shell for beryllium, just form these two bonding orbitals. Whereas for water, not only are those two bonding orbitals filled, but there's two additional sets, two additional pairs of electrons. So now this is occupied. So now it really pays for the molecule to have, if this is occupied, for it to have a bent geometry and greatly lower the energy of this from a non-bonding uh, to somewhat of a bonding orbital even though overall it's still non-bonding in the lone pair. Okay, so let's d diagram this out in terms of a kind of a little bit more of a quantitative versus the change in the molecular geometry. So when we have something like this, where we plot out the orbital energies versus some uh, distortion in a, in a molecular geometry coordinate, that's called a Walsh diagram. 
So the Walsh diagram is we take all of the orbitals and we plot their energy versus some type of geometric distortion in the molecule. In this case, we're scanning over the angle theta, which describes the angle between these two bonds. Uh, and I assume uh, it's you either have to do it as a uh, at a fixed bond length as you scan or at the optimal bond length for every given angle as you go. Either way, you end up with a Walsh diagram with the energies of all these uh, orbitals as a function of that intermolecular coordinate. So what do we see? We have at 180 degrees, as I said, the beryllium hydride, those two occupied bonding orbitals down low in energy here. As we distort those uh, going towards 90 degrees, getting a closer and closer bend towards each other, those orbitals do go up in energy. So if you're beryllium, uh, you have no reason to bend because you're just taking all of your occupied orbitals and pushing them higher up in energy, and you don't want to do that. However, if you're water, you've got four occupied orbitals, and over here, your 1 pi u is very high in energy, and the more and more you bend, uh, the more and more you're getting in energy for your for your efforts there. So one of them still stays completely non-bonding as a as a lone pair. So that's it's it doesn't care the 1b1 or 1 pi u. It doesn't care what the what the geometry is, what the angle is. But these other three, the equilibrium bond angle will occur wherever you get the minimum energy for the whole molecule versus this curve. So qualitatively, that'll be where uh, the derivative of the total energy is zero uh, when you sum up all these changes of the orbital energies. But uh, that gets much more complicated and nuanced because the total molecule energy is not exactly the sum of the orbital energies. So these that's one caveat of these Walsh diagrams that make them uh, not quantitatively super useful, but can be helpful for some qualitative analysis is that the sum of these orbital energies is not the exact uh, total molecular energy. But in this case, uh, this Walsh diagram can go a long way for helping us rationalize why it is that water prefers to be bent and uh, beryllium hydride prefers to be linear.